Hello there, I'm Joseph. And I'm Mariana. And today we're continuing on our Aldea Historica tour. Uh, today we're in, a, in one of Portugal's most beautiful villages. It's an Aldea Historica, or historic village. And uh, yeah, the name of this place is Belmont. It's, uh, it's an absolutely gorgeous town. It's got a population of around 3,500 people. And it sits, the, the castle town sits here astride this beautiful hill, of, of, of course, which the, uh, which the town gets its name from, Belmont Beautiful Hill. Some people say, however, it could mean Belimonte, which means the hill of war. Either way, I know it's gorgeous. It's looking out over the eastern slopes of the Serra de Estrela, the highest point on mainland Portugal, standing at about 1,993 metres altitude. And yeah, today we're going to show you around a little bit. So yeah, let's go. Yeah. Okay, so we're just coming in here through the big, massive castle doors. Look at those up there. Took some, took some work getting those stones up there, I dare say. And look at this beautiful big door knocker here. Absolutely fantastic. <laughs> but yeah, we don't need to knock for entry, but we do need to visit the, uh, the visitor centre, which is just in here. And uh, yeah, the, the castle used to be uh, free entry, but now, um, now, which I think really is warranted, because there's, there's so many tourists that come, I think it is, it's, it's warranted to pay. And now they have a small charge of two euros per adult uh, to come in, which I think is very fair. So yeah, now we're going to go in and uh, yeah, pay. Look at this entrance, wow. <laughs> The way that this entrance is sighted here on this, on this big sort of corkscrew turn, that is, uh, that's because they need as many right angles as possible here, so that, um, so that yeah, enemies couldn't bring couldn't bring siege weapons and machinery and things in. They would have a heck of a time. Look at this. You see the face of Pedro Alves Cabral. Where are you looking? He's in there. In the here on the end. Yeah. Pedro Alvarez Cabral. Yeah, I know. Oh, I didn't know. Yeah. Oh, yes, now I see with the beard. Yeah, fantastic. He's the uh, the gentleman that discovered Brazil. But yeah, there's um, he, this is his this is his hometown. So we'll uh, we'll have a look around the town later, and I'm, I think they've got a big statue to him here as well. So we'll no doubt see that. There we go. This looks lovely. Very nice. The big diorama of Belmont Castle here. Look at that. Fantastic. And I believe the castle has 2,265 square metres space, so that's uh, relatively large. I think it's a 13th century castle as well. Hola! <laughs> Bom dia! Uh, era dois bilhetes, faz favor. Dois? Sim. Quatro euros. Aqui. Obrigada. Muito obrigado. Obrigado. Okay, now we're going to go have a little look around the castle. So yeah, this is the entrance to come in here. Mariana's gonna jump over the edge. Yeah, Don't do that, Mariana. I'm not pregnant anymore. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, last time at Sotelia Castle, you couldn't couldn't climb up, could you? It was no. it was me who had to climb up. Yeah. Now it's possible. Now yeah. it's possible. Yeah. <laughs> Look at those views. I don't think don't think you can quite see where we're where we're from. You can't see the Gardunia Mountain and Fundal. It's, quite, it's just round the corner there. You've got the Serra de Estrela over this way and the Gardunia's over there, but way over there. So we can't quite see it. And yeah, Belmont is about, oops, about an hour's drive away from us, roughly, more or less. Uh, this, is, this is where we just saw on the, on the diorama, the big open field where they had the, uh, the horses and whatnot and everything, fantastic. Museum, Tour de Menage, eh? Wow, it's big. Was it 2,265 square meters, I think, wasn't it? Yeah. Marvellous. Passo dos Cabrais. The Cabral Palace. Named after Pedro Alvarez Cabral. In the end of the 15th century, Belmont Castle was transformed to become the Alcaide's residence. All around the castle's interior was built a major central patio perimeter for residency areas, storage, and all the services. Marvellous. What's that bit just here? Fantastic. I reckon this is the well. This is where all of the, uh, the villages and everything would have got their water from in here. Yeah, I think 
There's a plant growing under there. It's the perfect, perfect greenhouse under this glass. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah, we can go up. No, we can't go up. There's a sign. It's not like Sortelia. They've got a little bit more health and safety measures here. <laughs> shall we? Um, shall we go up to the up to the main tower? Yeah. Let's take a peek. So yeah, this is not quite as tall as uh, Sabigal Castle, where we went just a few weeks ago. Uh, if you haven't seen that video, then click the link at the top of the screen here, and uh, and you'll be able to see us going up uh, Central Portugal's tallest castle tower, which was which was amazing. Mariana didn't come with me that day because she uh, she just had a little Chloe, yeah. but um, yeah, it was really really tall, really scary. That's a lovely view. Wow. So there's the Serra de Estrella. You can just see we're we're um we're to the east of the Serra de Estrella here, where we were last week, Mantegas. That's just behind just behind this peak here. That's the glacial valley in there where Mantegas sits. And yeah, fantastic. City, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's a romantic little Romeo and Juliet balcony here. <laughs> As we just come down here towards the tower, you've got the uh, beautiful big arrow slit there. Mariana, I'm just going to take a peek outside this arrow slit. <laughs> it's going to be facing the front of the castle, so facing south. So yeah, that's built like that, so the archers would get, if you've seen my other videos, you know I've said this before, the archers could get a good shot all the way from there, right round to there. And of course they wouldn't they wouldn't have a, a very good chance of shooting back at them through this little tiny gap. That would be, that would be rather, rather difficult to say the least. But yeah, let's go catch up with Mariana in the tower. Oh, I thought this was the way we come, but it wasn't. <laughs> that was the way we come there. Looked like that made you flinch for a moment there, Marianne. <laughs> a beautiful bell tower down there, absolutely gorgeous. You can really see for miles around, and we're not even we're not even at the top of the tower yet. This is just the this is just the walkway round it. But um, you can see here the uh, the Rio Zesa, the Zesa River, the biggest biggest river in our in our area of Portugal, the biggest river in uh, central Portugal. Do you mind heights, Mariana, or not? Yeah. You you don't like them, or you do like them? I don't like them. You don't like them. <laughs> do you like going? Yeah, let's take a peek. Why not? Tour de Menage. Tour de Menage. Masks obligatory. Sorry about that. <laughs> Aha, here's the stairs. I'm so These stairs here are uh, definitely quite small but um i've got big feet though but they're uh, they're much bigger than, than the stairs at um at, uh, sabigal castle <laughs> that one was uh that one was scary for someone who doesn't like heights that much up we go i can see light we must be nearly there that's quite a few steps to go up there wow i'm sorry no no you're fine i can see why I don't want to fall downwards, that's for sure. Well, now we're we at the top. Now we're at the top. And there's the Belmont, Belmont flag up there, fantastic. <laughs> and here's the, here's the rest of the town. It's quite a large town with, yeah, I think I said earlier, about 3,500 people living here. Look, I think it's because Pedro Cabral had the I think you're right, yeah, Ped go. Pedro Alvarez Cabral, the, the Portuguese diplomat that discovered uh, Brazil. So they've got the Brazilian flag, the Portuguese flag, and then behind me over there, the, uh, the Belmont flag. Can we go around this way or not? No. No, we yeah. can't, okay. Good the end. That's the end, okay. It's a nice view though. The one up there, the European flag. Yeah. What's it look like over this way? Oh, that's a quirky, a quirky roof design. There. Oh, there's the visitor centre that we come out of. 
just there and there's the there's the keep fantastic inside the stronghold wall there wow and then you can see the other side of the Zeza river swooping around this way and yeah where we were last week uh mantegas um yeah that's that's the birthplace of the rio zeza the zeza river um but if you haven't seen that video yeah click this link up here i really like the video if i say so myself but yeah <laughs> beautiful job. beautiful view okay let's make our way down and let's go check out the rest of the town yeah. Did I go first? if you want me to <laughs> yeah, I'm scared about it. mariana wants me to go first so yeah here we go It's a long way down, Mariana, don't fall. Please not talk to me now. If you fall, you're gonna push me all the way down, I think. This is down to the first floor, and then the stairs keep going down to the ground floor past that. <laughs> it is a long way down. Okay, so now we're down from the tower. And uh, yeah, it wasn't quite as tall as uh, Sabigal, but uh, that's because that has the, uh, the tallest the tallest castle tower here in central Portugal. But, um, but yeah, now I think we'll head to the town centre yeah. and, um, and yeah, see what, see what there is. Let's check it out. down from the castle now we come along the high street uh, the main high street here in Belmont uh, it's a beautiful high street it's really lovely it's got all these granite benches and these big beautiful uh, arrays of flowers and everything and of course we've got all these statues along here as well and this is the main statue in the town and it depicts uh, a man called Pedro Alvarez Cabral which was the, uh, the the Portuguese diplomat who discovered Brazil in the year 1500 yeah 22 of April on the 22nd of April. Yeah. Yes. Fantastic. Brazil. Do you know anything else about him at all? You're Portuguese, uh, so perhaps you do. Yeah, uh, <laughs> he discovered Brazil 44 days the time he left Lisbon. So from Lisbon to Brazil it took him 44 days? Yeah, but he supposed he go in India and found in Brazil. Okay, so he was supposed to go to India and then found Brazil instead. Yeah. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. And his hometown here is, uh, is Belmont, uh, hence, the, hence the statue here of him. Uh, there's only three statues of Pedro Alvarez Cabral. There's uh, one here in his hometown, Belmont. There's one in Lisbon, and the third is in Santarém. Yeah. But yeah, fantastic. Let's have a look at the high street. Okay, and as we come up from the uh, from the main high street there, where the statue of uh, Pedro Alvarez Cabral was, uh, we come up here and we've got the big beautiful olive press statue here. And uh, legend has it that this uh, this olive press statue it's symbolising the uh, when the the Lord of Belmont he uh, he said he would rather have his he would rather watch his daughter be crushed inside an olive press than uh, than to surrender the castle. And uh, it's standing atop of this astride this uh, this big uh, four leafed clover in the ground there. So let me read this, please. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Trevo de quatro folhas. São muito raro, mas simboliza a esperança, a fé, o amor e a sorte que a Câmara Municipal lhe deseja e quer que leve consigo de Belmont. Ah, oh, that's nice. Yeah, yeah, that's nice. That's nice. They're wishing us all luck. So yeah. <laughs> Now we're going to move on and go to the uh, the old quarter of the town, yeah. which is just up this way, up by the castle. Now as we come up here now. We've circled right back round. Here's the uh, here's the castle, and we're now coming into the uh, into the old quarter of the town. So let's have a little look round. And yeah, as we look around here in the Largo de Pelourinho, in the middle of the uh, the old part of the town, we've got the former old town hall here, which is a beautiful, beautiful, simple rectangular building. It's been documented back to the 15th century. And um, yeah, during the French invasions, 
in the 19th century. Um, they had the uh, the stone coat of arms destroyed because uh, because Belmont did not surrender. Okay, well that just about wraps up our day here in Belmont with the church bells going to, to sign off the day. And uh, now we're going to go a stone's throw away, just a couple of kilometres away, over in that direction, over to the west. Uh, we're going to a little village, and um, if you watched our, our, our episodes uh, a few weeks back, you rem may remember that we were picking olives on our farm with uh, our good friends and neighbours Pinto and Zeza. Well, uh, Zeza has a, a house for sale in, uh, in the, the little small village a couple of kilometres away. And she asked if I would uh, if I would put it on my on my YouTube channel and show you all. Uh, it's for sale, and if any of you are interested, she asked if you could send me an email, and I can I can forward your your details on to her. But yeah, let's go let's go take a look. Yeah. Okay, so we've just left Belmont now, and we're uh, in a village that's literally just outside of Belmont. It's just a few minutes away. Uh, you can actually see Belmont. When you look over the views over there, you can actually see the, uh, the beautiful castle town, Belmont. And uh, yeah, Zeza has uh, this wonderful little village cottage for sale here. And uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a small little house. It's got enough, enough size for, uh, for a, a couple, maybe a couple with a child. And um, yeah, it's, a, it's a, got this big, beautiful, round, swooping wall on the outside here. And uh, it's, a, it's a really lovely little house. So, um, so I thought I'd show you around, uh, kill two birds with one stone, show you around Belmont, and then show you Zezza's house for sale here. The house actually has um, some land as well. It's got a couple of hectares just a, a short distance away on the, uh, on the mountain, on the mountainside over there, uh, which would make a fantastic farm. So if, if you either wanted to, to buy the, uh, the little village cottage here or the cottage and the farm, or just the farm, then um, yeah, send us an email. I'll have it written on the screen just here. And yeah, send us an email and, and, and have a chat with us about it. Be Mariana or, or Zeza, we can come and show you, the, uh, show you the village, show you the house and everything the, the village has got to offer which it's got quite a lot. I was just walking around the village with Zeza and it's got, um, it's got a couple of cafes, it's got um, a beautiful little shop, but, uh, this big swimming pool which is for public use. It's got um, yeah, a lovely couple of things, a beautiful church, very, very nice indeed. But yeah, let's take a look around the house. Yeah. <laughs> So as we come into the house here, it's um, yeah, it's a nice small little house. It is, it's going to be fantastic for someone who wants to, um, yeah, have a, a lovely little village house uh, with the shop they can walk to, the cafe they can walk to in the morning, get their breads and their coffee and whatnot. And yeah, if, as we come in straight away, we've got the kitchen here, and uh, the furniture is included in the in the price with this house here. It's got this beautiful fireplace in the kitchen here, and yeah, there's the front door that we come in. And then as we come through here, call me Sensa. Oh, that's better, Mariana. We can see now. <laughs> then we come in through the uh, through the lounge, so off from the kitchen. What's the view like out there, Mariana? What's it like? Let's have a look. Beautiful. I thought it might be. Look at that. If I come out, oh, got the village that way, and then we've got the mountainside all over that way, <laughs> and the. Uh, a couple of hectares that are for sale separate or with the house are just up here on the mountain side but yeah it's a short short distance away a little walk away over that way thank you mariana <laughs> and then we've got this big beautiful dining table here look at that very nice indeed with all these lovely chairs and i love this I unit love this stuff, yeah look at that look at the the wood etchings in there that's absolutely gorgeous fantastic and what are the two little rooms off of here are they bedrooms or that looks like it might be a bedroom. Yeah. They're rather small mind, but yeah. What have we got here? This one, this one's a cupboard, okay. It's quite dark, sorry, it's a little bit dark on the camera there, but we've got a larder here. It goes back a couple of meters and a couple of meters that way, so it would be a good larder or somewhere to put your, your washing machine, your fridge, you know, that sort of thing. And as we come through here. It's a bed. Yeah, this one's a bedroom. Yeah. 
So yeah, again, rather small. It's about the same size as the larder, but you know, that'd do for a kid's room or something like that. And yeah, so that's that's the uh, that's the, the the total of the top floor. And then as we go downstairs, you'll see there's a there's a little bit more as well. So it is it is a, a small little cottage, but you know that would suit a lot of people. Yeah. Let me come down here. There's a cat, local neighbourhood cat, just running past. <laughs> I think if you buy the house, you're obliged to feed him. And then as we come down here, you can see behind me there's these big beautiful stone walls, and the street goes up there, and it goes it leads uh, it's about. Roughly 100 meters to the um, to the health the health post they've got up there the health center a little walk-in center that probably opens a few days of the week sort of thing and um, yeah a couple of cafes and and everything like that a little shop I saw as well and there's the Junta de Freguesia the post office the parish council the uh, the ATM on the outside of that so it's got quite a few amenities this place it's a, it's a nice little village and then as we come round the corner of the house here you can see the beautiful this is the view that you see out of the window there look at that that's a nice view. I could hear chickens over there as well, so <laughs> someone keeps chickens. There's the rest of the village there, so it sweeps around the back of the house and goes that way, the village. And as we come here, this is the downstairs, so it's got two outside doors, this, this property here. Another bedroom. Another bedroom here. This is a nicer size, this bedroom. This is nice and large, yep. And then a bathroom down here. So no internal staircase in here, but I'm sure there could be one fitted. Yeah. yeah, quirky design house, it's nice. And we have a shop in here. A little workshop, yeah, or somewhere to store all your tools and things, so maybe that could be where you'd put the uh, the staircase if you were to do this room up to be, to be um, you know, part of the house. So I'm, I'm six foot two, so the ceiling is oh, tall on my tiptoes, I can just about touch it, so it's tall. <laughs> but yeah, so this would be either keep it as the, the same as what it is now, as a nice little workshop or somewhere to store all your tools if you were to get the land with it for example you might want to might want to keep your your strimmers and your your weed whackers and things like that in here your lawn mowers and whatnot but um if not yeah you could incorporate this as part of the house it's all included in the footprint and everything the bedrooms were just upstairs so perhaps you could have a, um, a little staircase in here and make it make it a bit more open plan upstairs and yeah a bit more a bit more larger a bit more open but yeah the the price with this um with this property here so that the house is uh, 50,000 euros and um yeah with the land uh, you'd have to you'd have to send me an email and, and discuss that with um with Zezra it's a few hectares but we're going to go up there now and have a look because yeah. we haven't seen the land yet so we're going to go have a look and and see if we can get more of an idea Okay, and we've just come up now from the house. We've come up to Zezza's land here, and there is an awful lot of land. This land would be fantastic for somebody who was who was looking to to live uh, maybe off grid or something like that, or um, or yeah, just to, just to be isolated enough where you're where you're away from any prying eyes. You're not going to get anybody come up past this track. You're going to be nice and isolated in that regard. But you're also close enough to the village. It's 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 maybe not. It is walking distance, but you you might prefer to take your vehicle it's a few hundred meters so uh, and because it's a relatively steep track you might might well want to be taking your vehicle up that up that drive but what a lovely driveway to have going right up the mountain there into the trees and this land here we're not entirely sure because we haven't looked at the paperwork yet so we're not entirely sure on the uh, on the amount of hectares but looking at it I've been told well where the boundary is there is at very least three hectares here at very least uh, maybe another another hectare on top of that and uh, yeah, I can say with absolute certainty, you would not be buying would not be buying any firewood if you had a nice log burner sitting there in the in the winter time, sitting around your sitting around your wood burner in the evenings. I can imagine that would be very nice, very nice indeed. And you've got more than enough wood here where you could cater yourself and your friends and family for forever without having to buy any. <laughs> and uh, this land here, it's got um, it's got um, lots of olive trees and some fruit trees and things like that. And it's got as well, if you turn this way, you can see the view to Belmont. It's absolutely stunning. And uh, yeah, you'll, you'll see the altitude looking at that view. You'll see how high we are here. We are a good few hundred meters out at altitude here. It's absolutely gorgeous. But yeah, so please email me. The email I'm going to put on the screen here, there's going to be, uh, it's going to be written on the screen here. So please send me any emails that have uh, any interest and I can put you in contact with Cesar and you can, um, you can discuss it further. But yeah, I really, I really like this place. I think it's absolutely beautiful. It's, uh, it's about, 
well, it's about uh, five, ten minutes from Belmont, about ten minutes from Belmont. It's uh, about an hour from, from Fundau, so it's got... Um, all of the all of the amenities that you'd want you've got uh local grocery stores close by in belmont there's supermarkets and things so yeah absolutely fantastic so please do email and yeah i'll get back to you as soon as i can Okay, we've uh, we had a lovely day at Belmont. Uh, it's the next day now, and uh, yeah, we're back on our farm. And um, yeah, if you follow us on Facebook or Instagram, then you'll have seen uh, that I, I posted this morning um, that we had a, a lovely little lovely little lamb born on the farm. <laughs> it's uh, Ram Lamb, and he's uh, Charlotte's son. So that's uh, that's Charlotte's Charlotte's first first lamb. So um, so yeah, she's a first time mother. She looks like she's doing really well. We're going to go up to the barn now and uh, and have a peek and see see uh, how she's getting on uh, after the lamb's first couple of hours of life. And uh, yeah, we had loads of lovely, lovely name suggestions on uh, Facebook and Instagram and everything like that. And what was the what was the name that we picked in the end, Mariana? Charles. Charles. We like that name. Yeah, yeah. Charles the Lamb. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so yeah, let's go. Let's go take a peek and see how Charles is doing and see see Charlotte as well. So yeah, I uh, I came up here this morning and let the sheep out, and uh, yeah, Mariana was still in the house at the time, and uh, yeah, it's it's such a lovely, lovely surprise when you come up here in the morning, and of course, if you've watched our, our recent videos, you'll know that we were expecting to have lambs, but uh, we weren't expecting them exactly today, but um, but yeah, that's that's a nice little nice little way to start your morning off to open the doors and have this little face looking up at you, and it always catches you by surprise when you see that first lamb of the season and yeah that 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 is the first first lamb of 2022 for us now so hopefully that nice pleasant delivery is going to spark the spark the uh, the start to a, a nice pleasant lambing season so yeah we'll see but yeah let's take a look at charles and charlotte yeah. let's have a look here we are hello. hey charlotte hello hey how are you so she's here in the in the lambing pen we've got two lambing pens in this barn and then we've got another barn up the top this is the smaller of our two barns and yeah, she looks like she's doing really well. The other sheep have, have all left Charlotte to her own devices. They've all gone up, gone off into the into the pasture. <laughs> we just keep Charles here in the uh, in the lambing pen with Charlotte for uh, for a little while, not too long, uh, just uh, maybe a couple of days, just so that we can keep an eye on them both, make sure they're doing okay, uh, see how see how Charles is it, Charles is getting on with his mother, make sure he's taking milk and uh, everything is going smoothly and and as it should be, and then. Uh, yeah, by that time we should be already having the uh, the next lamb. I I hope from one of the uh, one of the other ewes. You you think you've got uh, another ewe ready to ready to pop, so to speak? Yeah. Which uh, one? Molly. We have Molly. Molly. Yeah. She's um, gonna be next. You think? I yeah. think so. Yeah. We'll I see. see. We'll, we'll see how professional you are in the next couple of days. Yeah. yeah. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, she seems to be seems to be getting on absolutely fantastic. She's a great little mum. But yeah, this is her. This is her first first little lamb. Bless her. Hey Charles. Uh. <laughs> He's happy. He's happy. He's happy. Hello. So yeah, they seem to be getting on absolutely fantastic. And yeah, it's Char it's Charlotte's first first baby, as I said. So um, so yeah, she's only had uh, only had the one lamb. That's that's relatively common when uh, when sheep have their first their first baby. Um, but yeah, but as we had some lambs last year from the other ewes, uh, we're hoping we're hoping that we're going to get some twins. So we're hoping hoping for a good sort of five five to six seven eight lambs, something like that. Really, yeah. aren't we? Between yeah. five and eight is is our estimate anyway. But we'll see. We'll see, we've got some younger ewes as well, so we don't expect lambs from them this year. But yeah, we'll see how we get on with that. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> okay, so that just about wraps it up for this week. We've uh, we've had a lovely a lovely week. We've been to <laughs> been to Belmont, uh, which is a beautiful place. It's one of our favourite uh, historic villages in Portugal, uh, the Aldeias Históricas, 
and um, yeah, if uh, if you if you like our historic village series, then consider having a look at our playlist uh, where we where we will will eventually show all of the historic villages in Portugal. Uh, but for now, we've got a few on there anyway. And yeah, we've um, we've had the the very start to our to our lambing season 2022 kicked off with the uh, with the birth of Charles. And uh, thank you very much to everyone who um, who give us name suggestions. Mm -hmm. We've had more name suggestions than we have lambs currently. We've only got the one. But um, as we get more more lambs, I'm sure I'm going to use some of them name suggestions because the names they were absolutely fantastic. But yeah, I'm expecting I'm expecting I've got a, a couple more ewes during the next couple of days, maybe tomorrow, maybe the day after. So you'll uh, you'll see those on our Facebook and our Instagram. So please consider following or adding me on Facebook, and um, and yeah, seeing those as they as they uh, get born, bless them. And yeah, I hope you liked our video. Uh, oops, sorry, Lily. <laughs> I hope you liked our video. Uh, if you did, please consider giving us a subscribe and a like. And uh, of course, as I said last week, Mariana's now doing all of the uh, the Portuguese subtitles with me. So um, so you can click the the closed caption button down there, and you can have all of the all of the Portuguese subtitles on the screen now for our episodes. So uh, that will help, of course, if you're Portuguese and uh, and you you prefer to to read subtitles in Portuguese, or if um, or if you're trying to learn Portuguese, that might help. You might you might get a word here and there. You might pick up a word. I don't know. But um, hopefully it helps, and uh, hopefully you all have an absolutely fantastic week. Look forward to seeing you all again next week. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.